Metal Gear on the original Nintendo. I got a new camera mount. Hopefully I won't bump it as much. So one of the things that I do when I'm looking at used games is I try to figure out, okay, what all is going to go into cleaning it? You know, just kind of give an overall assessment of it. So we've got some, let me get my pointer. Does it work? We've got some adhesive right up there. You can see there. Um, the label just kind of overall has a little bit of a haze to it, which isn't a big deal. There's a little bit more adhesive on here. And all I'm doing, and you can see that coming up really well. So you see this area right here, and then you see this area up here, is just shining it at a light source and getting an idea of kind of where all the sticky stuff is. Got a little bit of residue on there. We have what looks like colored in Sharpie, but there's also some texturing, some scratches that are on there. Um, nothing too bad. It's a little dusty on the inside. And then on the back, we just have the standard stickers. Nothing too crazy. So you got a barcode sticker that's covering the third screw, an old price sticker, and a little bit of transparent tape. Nothing too terrible, though. Label's in good condition. So as I pick up one of these games and I go, well, you know, should I get this? Should you buy this? You know, if you saw this on the shelf and you said, oh, I really want to get Metal Gear, should you buy this? If it's priced well and if it's a price that you're comfortable with paying, sure, absolutely. You know, but don't bite off more than you can chew, which means that if there was some significant label damage and that was going to bother you, don't even mess with it. You know, if this is going to bother you, don't even mess with it. I will show you how we're going to fix that. But by fixing it, all we're going to do is get rid of the scratches. Okay, we're going to just smooth out and even out the scratches that are on there. Yes, it'll damage the cart. We'll totally get into that. But it's going to bring it back to how it should look. Long story. Stickers on there. The label is a little faded. I think we could probably bring a little bit of the color back to it, but it looks like at some point there was tape or something over it. So let's pop it open and let's see if there's any trouble on the inside that we need to be aware of. What I'm seeing a lot more of is, is people that are buying games and consoles and stuff for cheap and thinking, yeah, I can fix this up. And I... I, I don't want to discourage people from doing that, but I also want to make sure that people don't, like I said, don't bite off more than they can chew, where they get into a situation where they go, oh, I shouldn't have bought this. This is really complicated. I'm always more than happy to help people out if they buy a cart that, you know, they want to clean. Ooh. Camera won't even focus on it. It's so gross. Just a layer of dust. More than happy to help people out if they buy a cart that they want to get cleaned up. And if they feel like they kind of got a little in over their head, we'll file those down. Yeah, those are a little sharp. Um, you know, but I guess, I guess what I'm saying is don't go out looking for trouble, <laughs> so to speak. This one's fine. I mean, this one is, is no, no big deal at all. And if you got it and you said, well, I want to get into video game cleaning, this would be a perfect kind of way to start. Um, it's got kind of your standard residues in the standard places. It's got a little bit of residue here and there that, I mean, a lot of that stuff just works off, you know, and then we'll touch up the plastic a little bit. we got this, which is a little bit of a, a curiosity. It's not necessarily really going to hurt anything if you leave it like that. Um, I'll try to get rid of the scratching that's on there. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I, again, this was from 86, I think. Do not clean with alcohol. This is from 1985, 86, something like that. Um, it's, it's lived a long life. There's some weird stuff that happens to it. No big deal. So actually, let's start with the back. Um, so first things first, and I feel like I neglect to do this in a lot of videos. I do it. Like, trust me, I do. Um, 
but I feel like I neglect to, to show you guys this step. All-purpose cleaner. Again, pick your favorite. Doesn't really matter what one. You just want something that doesn't have a lot of alcohol in it. Basically something that works as a surfactant. Basically something that um, breaks up the... Ugh, breaks up the tension. Eases the tension, baby. Just eases the tension. And just something you can clean off. Again, you could use soap and water for this. Lots of people use soap and water in their cleaning videos. Um, and that's really all you need. Part of the reason that I like to use an all-purpose cleaner, and this one is all with plant-based cleaning power, mostly just because it has a good scent. And so one of the things that I like to do when I clean, especially the older games, is clean them with something that has a light scent, but it has to be a natural occurring scent or as small as possible of an amount of a fragrance or dye added. So that's really the big key, is you'll see me using an all-purpose cleaner that has a fragrance to it, but I try to stay away from anything that has dyes, because the dyes and some fragrances are going to be usually glycol-based. What that means is that they have something inside of the fragrance to give it a, a bonding. So think kind of like oil and water where you're going to have to have something in there for the fragrance to bond to. So they put an oil, which in, in this case it's a glycol, but they put in something like that to kind of hold the fragrance in. I try to stay away from those because it's just an extra something that I have to clean that I don't really want to have to deal with if possible. So shiny. This plastic's looking really good. I've got a little abrasion right there. That's actual wear. Um, how you can tell. So I, I'm always wearing gloves, and you should be wearing gloves when you're using chemicals. I realistically don't have to be wearing gloves right now. I'm just using an all-purpose cleaner. But as you rub your finger along here, if you weren't wearing gloves, you would be able to feel a little bit of the texturing. Okay, So you'd be able to feel that it, it's a little, a little rough. But it's, it's rough in a consistent way. So as you rub your finger across, you're like, oh, that's rough. I can feel that. As soon as you get to this little part, it smooths out. So you can see right there how that smooths out. Can you retexture this corner of the cart? Can you retexture a cart? Say someone came in with alcohol and they did a wipe on it like I've shown in um, one of the videos. Actually, no, I haven't posted that video yet. One of the videos I show what happens if you put alcohol on a cart. It removes some of the texturing. Can you put this texturing back? Yes. Is it an easy process? No. Is it worth it? Not really. But can you? Sure. Yes. But it takes a lot of work, a little bit of heat. I'll make a video of it someday, but it's kind of mad science stuff, so we don't really want to get too into it. Let's see how easy this comes up. Oh, nice and easy. This is a good sticker. Good sticker. Love to see those. This one will be a little bit more of a pain. Just because I know this sticker. Could I be using heptane right now? Sure. Could I be using Goo Gone right now? Sure. Could I be using soap and water right now? Sure. But if I can limit the amount of chemicals that I have jamming all up against my surface, I try to do that where you go in and you try to clean it up as much as you can mechanically and physically before you go in with chemicals. Now, it's a little different with carts. I know that people are probably saying, like, where'd my cart go? Well, sometimes you use erasers. On this one, I'll probably just use an eraser and then see how it looks, okay? And I'll just use the pink eraser, see how it looks. If I'm happy with that, great. If I want to go anything beyond that, then sure, I can put down isopropyl alcohol and I can let it soak for a second to break up all the oxidation. Um, sure, I could do that. But I, and I kind of go back and forth about do you start with chemicals or do you start mechanically? For me, if it's something like a plastic surface, I want to try to see if I can get it off physically first. So I want to see if I can just use a scraper and a little bit of scraping and a little bit of effort, maybe a little bit of low heat, 
just to be able to get something off first. And then I can look at the chemicals. But any time that you can remove something without having to introduce liquid is fantastic in my book. Oh, that wasn't even that bad either. The fates have smiled upon me today. Okay. So get all that out of the way. We'll just give it a once over. Just looking to make sure that there's not anything that we missed. That too. So you see we got a little bit of abrasion right there. Got a little bit of abrasion right there. A um, little bit of sticker residue. Let's see if we can catch it right there. But I bet you that's actually probably going to clean up. And then I hit my camera mount. This is terrible. I need to find a good camera mount that's like up in the sky where I'm not going to hit it, but I can zoom. But also I can see the screen. These are my demands. I'm trying to be careful around the label. Um, again, this game cost me $10. If this was, you know, stadium events or something, I would tape out the label to make sure that I'm not going to get anything on the label. I'll do a quick wipe just to get any dirt off. Not much. Um, if this was like a stadium events or something, sure. I would tape out the label. I would use painter's tape. And I would tape out the label a little bit wider than I needed to be. Um, heck, since you're here. So I would take the painter's tape. This is what we would do. I won't do like the full cutout or everything. Um, but I'll just show you like the basic idea. So you pull a piece of tape that's about the size of that right back there, okay? You get another piece of tape that's that exact size, but a little wider. So let me show you what we make. Again, it's not gonna be the size, bear with me, I would like properly cut it and stuff. So see what we did there? And I cut that a little too short, whatever. Um, so this side is going to go against the label to protect it. And then this side is going to go on the outsides of the cart to hold it down. So there's not anything sticky that's touching the label, but I still can work in the general area. You know what I mean? I can still work in the general area and, and be able to wipe and not have to worry about touching the label. When I'm done, I can just peel the label off or I can peel the painter's tape off and it still protects that label underneath it. Not so much that you have to do it on back cases because back cases you can swap them and everything. It just depends on how rare the back case is. You know, if it's the five screw or something, those you want to keep. Um, but the same technique will work on the front. So you tear your piece of tape that's the exact size of this, a little bit over on the edges. Put a bigger piece of tape over it. Bada bing, bada boom, Bon Jovi. Make sense? You don't see me do that too often because I'm not really cleaning like super valuable games. Um, and it's, I feel confident enough that I'm not necessarily going to get something on the label. So I don't necessarily have to worry about it too much. Um, if it was something for a customer or something for, um, you know, if someone specifically requested that or something, or if it was a rare game, sure, I'm going to bring out a lot more of the kind of tricks of the trade. But a quick wipe down like this for the own, for my own collection, you know, it's fine. And I don't actually, interestingly enough, I don't actually deep clean a lot of my own games. I have a quick cleaning and sanitizing method that I use for my own stuff that I'm comfortable with. It's not crazy, and it's something that I do very quickly, um, but it's not like, you know, I'm not putting it in a UV chamber or anything. It's something where I can just do it kind of fast and loose and know that I'm comfortable with how quickly I have cleaned that. I got five levels of cleaning. 
that I kind of recognize. So there's um, light, medium, and heavy cleaning. And then there is a graded cleaning and a photography cleaning. So those are the, the five kind of levels that I have. But interestingly enough, you can have heavy photography cleaning or you can have a light grading cleaning. It really just depends on the condition of what it is that you're cleaning and then what you want your outcome to be. So this one I would probably say is a light cleaning. Yeah, there's nothing really too crazy. This is probably a light cleaning. The label's probably a light cleaning. This, I'd say, would probably still be a light, maybe starting to touch into medium. Um, and then that can change, too. As you're going along, if you start to clean more and more, and then you go, man, this is actually a little tougher than I thought it would be. You know, absolutely, you can bump up the level of, of difficulty. So you give kind of an initial assessment, and you say, well, I think this is going to be pretty easy clean, and then you get into it and you go, I was wrong. But it sets an expectation and it sets a standard of how much effort you are going to put into that cleaning. Which is a good thing because you need to be realistic about when you are done. And there's a couple of videos on this channel where I said, that's as far as I'm going to go. And what I mean by that is that you know, I don't necessarily need to go any further than that. That is good enough for what I'm doing. You know, so that is good enough for a light cleaning. You could get very obsessed with small details while you're cleaning. And you could spend hours fixated on one tiny little spot. You know, that's not necessarily what you were supposed to do. But it just depends. So what I'm doing with this is just kind of pushing it into the corners just to get it all dried up. After a scrub. Nice. And then always, 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 especially on the Nintendos, you want to get those corners and seams. Always, always, always. Give it a once over, make sure you're happy with everything. Can't do much about the road rash unless you wanted to retexture the whole thing. So we're not gonna get into all that. So I'm gonna put down a towel because I got a little too much dirt on the surface here. We're gonna start to work on the front. First thing we're gonna do is take our dry erase marker. We're gonna color in here. See if we can't get rid of the Sharpie. A little bit of heptane. soak in for a second and then as you're doing this if you're if you're feeling like you're not making a lot of progress if you're feeling like it's not really doing anything look at the q-tip more than anything else the q-tip will tell you if you're making progress more than the surface will keep it away from the label so we got to get a little more Clever with this guy. Scrape it into the corners. Get it away from the label.
that is scratched in there. Do you guys like that I make a video of something and then I end up not even telling you what I'm doing? <laughs> All right, there we go. I had to change around my camera a little bit. Um, basically what I'm doing actually is taking the dry erase and really pushing it into the corners, letting it soak up and resaturate the inks a little bit. Come on, camera. There we go. Um, letting it soak up the ink a little bit, resaturate everything, and then I'm coming in there and I'm just wiping it off. And then you'll see that comes off fairly clean. I get quiet when I clean things sometimes because I'm just kind of watching it. And as I'm watching it, I'm trying to think if there's a different way that I need to be doing it. You know, if there's a, a different approach or something that I should be taking. So that about got out the majority of it. But like a big old dork. I want to make sure. Yeah, whatever, I use a magnifying glass, it's fine. I'll look and I'll let you know what I find. It's beautiful. Work of a master. You don't know, you can't see. Just a little bit in that top corner. Whoop. How are we looking now? Yeah, it's good. A little bit on the outside now, though. Which figures. Okay. How about now? Much better. I don't think I want to mess with the texturing though. <sighs> maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Maybe I do. I'll save that for later, actually. Um, Cause I don't really necessarily want to mess with it right now. You know? So we'll try up here. Oh, that is grimy. Oop. Did that tear on the label? There's that sticker. Oh, that is some rough stuff. Looks like at some point, someone tried to clean something up there. Cause you can see, see if I can zoom and if it won't freak out. You can see that. You see that? You see that? So that's the laminate coming off. So at some point, somebody, Must have scraped to get that sticker off. We'll introduce a little bit of heptane just to activate the adhesive and to kind of see what all has separated. Okay, so it looks like it's just that up there. Yep. Just a 
a little bit up there, though. NES games have a layer of laminate that is over the top of the sticker. Yeah, so you can see enhance. So you can see where at some point there was a sticker that went from about here, probably to about here, and was down about here. So at some point, someone had that sticker, because you can see a little bit of the remaining residue over here, had that sticker and pulled it off. And as they were pulling it off, this little flap started to come up. And what that little flap is, is the layer of um, lamination on the label itself. Whoop. So, as someone was pulling away at the sticker, it caught on the edge where the rubber meets the road and started to pull up the sticker. It's just a guess, but that's kind of what it looks like to me in my eight bajillion years of experience. So what does that mean? Well, well, Solid Snake, that means, actually, wait, spoilers. We won't get into all that. What that means is I'm not going to mess with this label too much. The top should clean up just fine. This is a video. The top should clean up just fine. Just doing a quick heptane. And then as you're doing it, just look and keep looking at the Q-tip to make sure you're not getting any color transference. I'm not gonna mess with this top corner though anymore because I don't want to mess with the lamination of the sticker. That's a whole separate thing. Plus, you don't really need to. That's just dirt. Get that up. Get that up. But this is one of those times where you just have to be a little subjective about select, subject, selective about what all you remove and what all you don't. Bottom came out just fine. Yeah, no more of that. And the top part, the residue's gone, but it's gone. Where did it go? The residue's gone, but you don't want to, don't push your luck. Because again, remember, you're going to hold the, the case like that. You're going to hold the game like that. You're going to hold it that far away. You're not going to be like, oh, there's a little smudge on his nose. So, and this is, like I said, this isn't a heavy clean, you know, this isn't anything like that. So it's not, it's not like I'm going to be getting down into the dirts and scraping every single line of ink, that kind of thing. Cleaning out the ridges. A little bit of dirt right there. this out. Stop getting things on the label, genius. I literally just said stop getting things on the label. going down the ridges, pushing this back and forth, turning it, pushing it into the corners, 
pushing it into the bottom corners, cleaning up the top, just getting all that dirt up. Cool. Cool. Actually, no, that's good. A little bit right there. Okay. Man, this poor little guy got beat up. Look at that. Well, good news, Metal Gear. You are going to go on the shelf with so many other Metal Gear games that it's kind of ridiculous. I really like this series. I have a lot of them. I have a lot of them, and if you or anyone you know ever wants to sit down and chat about the Metal Gear Solid plot line, well, buddy, let me tell you. Okay. Some people think that it starts with the Patriots. No, not the football team. But no, let me tell you something. It does not. It goes back further than that. At this point, Doug proceeded to go on a rant about the Metal Gear Solid storyline. And we just skipped all of that because complete nonsense. Okay. This side looks good. Still got to clean those out. Clean out your notches. Okay. Last but not least is this little guy. We'll knock down this little corner. And show it on camera because I forget that I have a camera. I just used a little file, a little real light grit file, um, just to kind of scrape those down, just so that they're not all jaggy. Okay. So we'll take our eraser. Let's see what we can come up with. And again, I feel like I have to make mention of this at this point, is that I have no intention of making it look like, oh my gosh, look how shiny they are, look how amazing they look, or anything like that. Because in my mind, I want it to be playable and authentic. So there are, as my table looks like, so there are methods that you can use that will bring back a shine to the pins and everything. But to me, I, I would much rather them work more than anything else. So, you know, the mirror finish, the nice shiny pins and everything. It, okay. Gonna do a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on the pins just to see if we can bring up any more of the oxidization. A bit, nothing crazy. But again, I'm also, I'm not one of those, 
one of those, what do you call them? Pen hounds, pen pals, pen people. It's still coming up a little dirty though. If it works, that's what I care about. If she doesn't work, that's what I care about. But yeah, these are coming up. Nice and clean. Yeah, like I could scrub the hell out of those pens and be like, look, they look amazing now, but if it doesn't work, that's the thing is if it's like, it's immaculate, it's shiny, it's perfect, it's great, but it doesn't work, it's like, it doesn't really matter. Now do it. Ta-da. Ta-da. And ta-da. Puppies, dad, bad boys down. I never know how many twists, but I know about when I'm going to get to the point where I need to stop twisting. Let's try. So completely out. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a half. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven and three quarters. Metal Gear, Metal Gear. I'm gonna keep calling Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear on the NES. That's about as simple as you can get it. Like I said, this I would consider this kind of a simple clean, um, you know, not for photography, not graded or anything. Tools that we used, 3.8 millimeter bit, scrapers, pointers, scrapers, scrapers. You should always have a, kind of an assortment of those. Um, toothbrush. I switched toothbrushes to this brush just a little bit just because I wanted something a little more aggressive. Um, magic erase marker. Q-tips. Heptane. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Where's the other one? There we go. Ice probe alcohol. Cleaner. Rags. Ta-da. Boom. I'll keep doing more of these. My goal is to do um, just more, just videotaping every single cleaning that I do so that if I do run into a problem, you guys can kind of watch along as I get into fixing that problem. Um, this little top corner is interesting. You can see some separation. I always do this. You can see some separation right there where more than likely some liquid got in under there. There's a little bit of bubbling right there. Um, but again, we got the majority of the residue off. Actually, we got all the residue off. Um, and then we got the Sharpie out of there. I don't know. I might, I might do a video for that. It might be something really short. It just takes a lot of explaining about what I want to do, about what we need to do. Sides are all clean. Back's all nice and clean. Insides are all nice and clean. Hey, remember, saliva is only about 99% water, so blowing into the cart's really not going to do all that much. I know there are people that say that that's not true, but... There are also people that say you should use isopropyl alcohol in carts. <laughs> um, but then also solvent, which is heptane, but whatever. So there you go. Metal Gear on the NES. I'll run over and make sure that it uh, works really quick. I'll show you a video of that. Like I always say, if it doesn't work, we'll go back and we'll clean up the pens a little more. It should work just fine. I'm not too worried about it at all. We'll go test, and then we'll get back to more cleaning. All right, here we are in the game room. We got Metal Gear on the Retron. Ignore the cables. We're moving some things around. I'm switching stuff around. And Metal Gear on the Retron. And there we go. Although the sound's not working. Oh gosh, the sound's working. Great. All right, let's go back. We made it. Easy enough. Done and done. That's about as easy as it's going to get. Game works just fine. I've played it a bajillion times, so there's no need to play through it or anything. 
Um, super simple clean. That's that's basically what I do when I get an NES game. I will do more of those. Super Nintendo. I have a Super Nintendo and NES. Um, it's a Genesis. I got a couple coming up, and I'll do more of those videos. Still hitting the camera mount. So until next time, I I try to respond to every single comment that is out there. So if you guys have questions, concerns, wonderings, or whatever, um, send me a message. Let me know. You can add a comment. You can find me on Discord. You can find me on Reddit, wherever it is. Send me a message. Um, E-L-D-O-U-G on basically every single thing in existence, and I'll, I'll help you guys out. Um, really, that's about it. I'm just going to keep making more of these videos so that we can troubleshoot things together and help you guys feel a little bit more confident in cleaning things up. So I appreciate all the um, subscribers. I'm trying to do more shorts, more tool videos, that kind of thing. And I'll cut up a lot of these and turn these into shorter instructional videos. But I think I like this format because you guys are able to follow along with me as I clean and I can walk you through the steps and it's not, you know, an ASMR. Let me run you through these things and not tell you what I'm doing. Until next time, say goodbye a little bottle of heptane. I'm going to get back to cleaning. See you guys.